Okay, here in our connection uh, component, we have many things to fill out here. Okay, we have a host, a port, a schema, the database name, the username, and password. Um, these are the main ones. So let's envision that I'm going to use a lot of, uh, I'm going to create a lot of jobs that use SQL Server connections. Okay, so what these are very good candidates for um, a context variable. So what I've done over here is created a SQL Server uh, context in my repository. So here's my repository. I come over to SQL Server. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, I come into context. I say new, create context group. And that's when I created SQL Server. As you see, I, got, I also created one for Redshift and the AWS S3 file system. Okay, so let's just look at SQL Server. So in SQL Server, what kind of things, what kind of variables do I want in my context? I want basically what's on the screen to the context. So we're going to open this up. We have a SQL Server. I'm going to say next. And as you see, I've already filled out a few of these things. So we have um, my connection is uh, here for to my SQL Server. Um, my database is called Talon Examples. My user ID is Talon user ID, and I have a Talon server password to put in. Okay, I'm also going to add in a port number, which most of the time is 1433, but you never know, so it could change. Um, and again, I'm going to go ahead and say port 1433. Okay, so let's see. Does that cover everything we were looking for? So we were looking for a host, a port, a schema. So let's go ahead and put a schema in. So in this case, um, I'm going to put in a schema. I'm just going to say SQL Server. Now you don't have to do this. Some of those you could just hard code right into the uh, component settings. But in this case, I'm going to. So I'm just going to say our good old DBL. Okay. All right. So I'm going to say finish. And so I have these contacts. And these can be used in every package now. So when I finish putting these in, it will say, do you really want to propagate the rename variable to all jobs now? If yes, it might be quite long time to update. If no, the old variables will be, be changed to built-in built in and in the job so if you say yes here what it's going to do is if you have other um, let's say you just added a couple or changed a couple uh, settings in your context it will come up the screen and ask you if you want to propagate all those changes to all your jobs that that call this uh, these context variables okay for SQL Server so I'm gonna say yes although there's really nothing that calls it because this is the first time I've connected this connect context but I'll say yes anyways so this was very, there's no modification needed update because it's very quick. It's super quick, but if you had a lot of jobs, it might take a while for it to go through all those and update. And you might be, you can also choose which ones you want to update. So you, you gotta be a little careful there in case you, you don't overwrite some things. So that's how you do context. And so now I'm gonna come in here and here's the host, right? So the way you put a context in, now you can hard code this, right? To, um, let's see. The, um, to the connection strings just like this just like this so we could put the, the hard code in right like that and that would work and you leave this in here like this and everything else and that's fine but the whole point of a context is that if if you hard code it in like this and all of a sudden you have a new connection that you, ch you, you migrated the data to and you ch want to change that connection you have to go in and open every package and go into every component that calls that host and change it manually. Whereas if you put in the context, uh, all you have to do is go into the context here and change it, okay, uh, once. And then do the cascade and it will cascade into all your, all your uh, jobs. Okay, at this point, you can come in here and type in context dot and hold your control key down and press your space bar. Now, what you see here, you should see the context variables that we had put in there, but you do not. And why is that? Okay, the reason why that 
the, the context variables are not showing up and just all these functions are showing up what you have to do before you can use the context is you have to put it into the um, into your job right you have to kind of register it so what we have to do here is come into when you go to components you might see context as a tab right and so you don't see anything in here as context right so what you do is we get this context if you don't see this okay if you don't see the context here you can go over to your um, show view click there and type in context right and then you can come in here and then that will help you show uh, show the context okay so if you don't see it you, you go up if you, there's something you don't see you can go to show view type in a, a search pattern and uh, they will find it but since we already have it here what we do is we go down to plus okay actually he, there's two ways of adding context there's adding plus which is like your this will these kind of contexts only satisfy this job okay they're only in the local they're only localized to this job you can't use them in other jobs so you can set up your contacts that way but in our case we've already set up a context so what I do is click this icon here and I go into my context and then I can see my SQL server is already here right and you would also see um, the redshift and AWS but I haven't put any variables in them yet so in this case and at this point you can select all of them like this and since I'm going to use all these I want to select them all but if I didn't want to use some of these just to make my my uh, my space a little bit neater I could go ahead and um, uncheck some I'm going to use them all so I'm say okay and now they're here for my use right so um, when I go back to my connection right now my con I click on my connection and as you see my contacts are here so where's my settings well you can right click and go to settings and what that does is it will put you into the component tab so if you're already there you can either click settings it will go to component or you just click on component and it, whatever you're in component it will take whatever's highlighted here all right so that's the one thing so now let's go back to our contacts and I hit my I, I typed in contacts I hit a period now I'm gonna hit control shift and there's my different contexts that I have set up for this job okay so you you remember you have to in, go ahead and do that kind of import into your context area of the job before you can use these contexts so here I'm going to go ahead and type, double click on host now I have host there I'm going to come over to port I want to type in context dot and I'm going to type in double click on port okay uh, schema same thing double click on schema and database um, sometimes you'll type this in manually let's say you're using a lot of different databases you, you know you wouldn't have a database context to describe just the content you know just the database so you might you might not use a context in this case but in this case I did have it set up so I'll type in context and we'll do database and user user um, yeah context dot. now if I wanted to I could say SQL like this if I have a bunch of contacts available uh, then it will still it will just bring up anything starting to that point you know with SQL um, so so you, that's kind of a good hint there so let's see a user ID right there and the password you can't type it in here so you have to click this ellipsis and then you can type it in here and click bound and uh, password okay all right so now we got everything right all right so everything's looking good here so I, and I'm going to go ahead now and uh, click and run this thing and so that's how you set up context variables I hope you've enjoyed this video